The Feminine Miss India contest stars 29 young hopefuls. And how lovely they look, and why not? It's the gala event for India's beautiful people. Attended by thousands, watched by millions, the Miss India beauty pageant is a stunning extravaganza. But we're not here for the beauty, we're here for the brains. Alongside the screen queens, pop idols and sports stars, who usually judge at such momentous occasions, there's an interloper, a young computer entrepreneur. I'm the geek in the crowd, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Named as one of the elite 100 who has, been, has had the greatest impact on the computer industry of the world, Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you Sabir Bhatia. As a 27-year-old, Sabir Bhatia came up with an idea now used by internet surfers everywhere and sold it to the biggest computer company in the world for hundreds of millions of dollars. A couple of years ago, there's no way I could have, you know, I would have ever imagined that I'd be over here. <laughs> Now he's the high-tech pin-up boy in a country with its eye on the crown of world leader in the cyber age. For these people, the internet and all the promise of the cyber age is worlds, if not centuries, away. Luxury here is access to a washing machine, not a website. Barely half of India's billion people are literate, let alone computer literate. And for most, just surviving is a daily struggle. But while it may have missed the 19th and 20th centuries, in cities like this, India is leading the world into the 21st. We essentially live in two worlds. Narayan Murthy is Bangalore's Mr. Big, founder of the computer giant Infosys. Every day, he travels to work through one India, the squalid, struggling reality outside his high-tech compound, and arrives at work in another. As our people come through in their buses, cars, and whatever it is to Infosys, they see on the road tremendous poverty, poor infrastructure, pollution, all that. And they come here they get transformed into a mindset that is completely Western in terms of quality, timeliness, in terms of satisfying the customer, etc., etc. And they go back in the evening and they journey through this Indian reality once again. And that is tough, that's not easy. Operating a world-class computer corporation in a country without modern phone lines or reliable electricity would hardly seem the key to business success. Even in cyber-obsessed Bangalore, the power supply is so erratic, it plunges the city into darkness at least once a day. Just to give you an idea, for example, if the power goes off for a fraction of a second in this centre, it takes us about eight to ten hours to recover all the databases and all the programs or computers. Narayan Murthy's answer, build an entirely self-sufficient industrial complex, a cyber city that not only has its own electricity generator, but will soon also have squash courts and a gym. Now let us look at Northern Telecom, one of our important customers here. And it's proved remarkably successful. Infosys has gone from a $240 startup company 17 years ago to a $1.5 billion software exporter today. My desire has been 
has always been to create wealth legally and ethically in India. I also wanted to show how we can retain our bright young boys and girls in the country by giving them high quality jobs, by giving them challenging work assignments, etc. Once a British Army officer's base, Bangalore has always had a reputation for quality education, and it's helped produce one of the largest English-speaking populations in the world. Hi. What's your name? Arun. Arun Kumar. Sabir Bhatia is the system's most successful graduate. You're going to become a computer scientist, right? No. No, no, no. Businessman, what do you say? Stationer. Stationer. Businessman. But when he went to school here at St. Ignatius College, there was nothing to indicate he'd become one of the world's top computer entrepreneurs. Hotmail is the invention that's put him there. It began with the astoundingly simple idea of email on the World Wide Web. It was an idea with potential and became the free email system that allows people to talk to each other from any computer anywhere. Bill Gates also saw the potential. With the awesome resources of Microsoft, he could have set up his own system. But Hotmail quickly attracted millions of users, and the CEO of the biggest computer company in the world decided Hotmail was hot property. So hot, he paid $400 million for it. I, I meet with him once, you know, in three or four months. Uh, it's not like I can pick up the phone and call him either. It's, I'm not on, at that level, but I still do refer to him as Bill. Bill. And you still took 400 million off him? Um, well, he got a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> My personal email address is sabir at hotmail.com. But this budding IT tycoon didn't stay in Bangalore okay. to make his millions. Like many of India's best and brightest, he left for California's Silicon Valley. See you. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Businessman. All right, Dad, I think, how about a bet? Whoever is closer to the pin, okay, you closest to the beer. pin wins a bottle of beer. Fine. All right, I'm I'll sure go. I'm, I'm gonna win. Now when the Hotmail High Flyer jets into Bangalore for a game of golf with Dad, he's not only a local hero, but one of the highest ranked players in an exclusive global club. Hotmail is a brand name around the world and Sabir Bhatia has more money than he knows what to do with. That's a much better looking shot than what I had. Oh, it's good, it's on the green. Oh, it, uh, to be honest with you, for the first couple of months, I was pinching myself every day. I didn't think that it, it was, it was, it was for real. When I say something... <laughs> Nor did his family. His father, an ex-army officer, was incredulous. Making money was not in the family's blood. The one thing we were assured that he is going to be something. But I didn't anticipate that this phenomenal and that too, that soon, we didn't anticipate. Frankly speaking, that at the age of 27, you know, he gets name, fame, wealth. And it's the miracle of the cyber age. Ideas alone can make millions, hundreds of millions. Here, another Indian idea is taking off, though this one is not yet making millions. This is the place where we receive all our Home India letters. The letters are received on this computer and printed off this printer. In this uh, tiny Bombay office, Sanjay Mehta has come up with a very practical way to start bridging the gap between India's high-tech future and its low-tech reality. And after printing, hands over the bunch to this lady, Ms. Mantaram here who is stuffing the letters in these envelopes. So that way you've got both electronic mail and snail mail. That's right. Voted the country's most useful website, this office receives emailed letters from outside the country in a hypersecond, then sends them on via the traditional mail service. That is the whole point. You see, penetration level of internet is not very high in this country. So that is why this service is very successful in India. And we feel it is very relevant for Indian situation. Is it almost as though you're 
company straddles both the first world and the third world? Yes, absolutely. You see, one of the other things is that people believe technology is meant only for the highlight class. This is an application which takes technology right to the masses. It doesn't give them the instant communication of a hotmail connection, but combining India's notoriously slow postal service with electronic mail is at least a step toward the new India. This man is determined to take India the rest of the way. So India is watching me. Everybody is watching me as an example. If I succeed, India will succeed. The Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Chandra Babu Naidu, is regarded as the country's most extraordinary politician. He presides over one of the poorest states in India, but he plans to copy Bangalore's success on a grand scale and transform his pre-industrial state into an international cyber hub, where high-tech high flyers won't have to leave or set up separate cities to succeed. There are excellent Indian brains. I'm very clear in that. Now all these brains are working outside. We are not inferior to anybody in the world, but our vision, lack of vision. Naidu's vision involves nothing less than smashing the entire political and bureaucratic culture in India, a culture of stifling inefficiency. And already, it's won over Microsoft and another software giant, Oracle. They're investing hundreds of millions of dollars in his state. The trade-off is that Naidu gets things done. This building, to house these and other international and national IT companies, was commissioned and built in just a year. Around here, such a feat is regarded as miraculous. Everybody is thinking pessimistically. It won't happen. It cannot be done. Now I am saying, don't say, I cannot. Say, I can. Then you will do that. But don't let this confidence hide the enormity of the task. Here in Naidu's capital city, Hyderabad, the inefficiencies of the old India cannot be ignored. They might have their eye on the future, but no one in this traffic snarl is going anywhere fast. It's very easy to get uh, frustrated by a few negatives that you see around you. But I do see a lot of positive things going on. And I think if, you know, in the next uh, three to five years, you will see a paradigm shift in the, in the conditions in the country. You will see tremendous changes. But while the high-tech profits plot India's catapult into the IT stratosphere, this Bombay-based hybrid mail system may be as close as many people will ever get, even to email. In a country with more high-tech ideas than computers to handle them, most Indians could still be looking at a slow shuffle rather than a leap into the cyber age. <laughs>